Have you ever heard the sound of freedom? Have you ever heard the sound of freedom? Hello, and welcome to episode five of the Beyond the Battle podcast. It has been too long since I've posted an episode. I do apologize for that. My goal is to do an episode every other week, and I'm about a week away from it being a month between episodes. So I have not gone anywhere. If you wondered, if I gave up on the podcast, if I gave up on you, the listener, I did not. It's just been a pretty crazy last few weeks. A couple things to update you on. The now seven-week, they were six-week, now seven-week online uh, virtual small groups with me through the Beyond the Battle book have been going awesome. I'm telling you, really, really encouraged by those. Uh, You can go to atacrossroads.net slash six weeks for more information, and you can tune in there or get on the mailing list for when the next set of groups will be offered. And really, it's reminding me, Even if you can't be in one of these groups with me, the point of the Beyond the Battle book really is to go through it with a group of guys where there's accountability. As guys, we don't like reading books in general. We don't like doing, I mean, I don't want to say we don't like, some of us are in the habit of doing daily devotional time. Some of us aren't. Um, especially if you're not, it's very hard to get into that pattern without there being some community around you. I think we just do well together, whether it's on a sports team or with coworkers or whatever it might be. When we're doing something with other people, with other guys, uh, we're more likely to do it. We're more likely to meet deadlines. And it's just been really, really fruitful to go through this group together. I'm doing two different groups, a Tuesday night group, a Thursday afternoon group. And the point of the book is to really do it as a daily devotional. So you read a couple pages, and in the back there's scripture reading, there's a prayer. And I'm telling you, to see God using his scripture to change men's hearts is, I'm just honored it's priceless it's so awesome to be able to be a part of it so if you read beyond the battle and you don't do the daily devotional time you're really shortchanging yourself and if you do the, even if you do the daily devotional time but you're not also doing it within a small group so appendix a is full of small group questions there's the videos which we've been doing here on the podcast together Uh, You're really shortchanging yourself if you're not doing it in that setting as well. So other than that, other Beyond the Battle sort of updates, the audio book, as I mentioned last episode, is available at southfrancispress.com. And what we're going to do today is jump into the next video in the series for the small group series. And the video for this week is the fifth video in this series of six. It's on chapters 10 and 11, entitled Embracing Reality. And the reason I'm committing the first six podcast episodes to these videos is so if you decide to lead your own group through the Beyond the Battle book and the videos, this is a little bit of commentary so that you can have a little bit of insight. Honestly, there was just some things I don't think were very clear in the videos or some questions that have come up in groups that I've done that would be helpful for you to kind of know what I was thinking in the video so you can explain it better when you do your group. But first, we will jump into our mailbag. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. So you can email the podcast the email address is beyond the battle podcast at gmail.com. It is a very long email. I'm going to change it eventually. Uh, the Gmail system is so full of people that want podca- or have, want email names that sound like the ones I would want. You would be surprised how many of the names shorter and better were already taken on gmail so but for now that is the email beyond the battle podcast 
at gmail.com. Don't be scared. Don't be shy. I would love to hear from you. Also, on Twitter, at battle underscore podcasts. And on Twitter, I'll follow you back, and you can send in direct messages that way uh, if you would like. So I do have some emails still. Last time, I read an email from Guy. He actually sent in three three questions. So thank you for that, Guy, because I need them. Um, if you would like to also send in questions, please do. The questions are helpful. I think they bring a little more life to the episode. And frankly, uh, I want it to be a resource for you as a listener. I know you might just be driving in your car and be like, I don't really want to stop and send an email, but uh, do it anyway. Not while you're driving. Don't email and drive at the same time, but make a note to do it later or pull over and write me an email with questions. It can be questions about anything I talked about. It can be just general questions that you have as a man or a woman. Uh, I'd love to hear from some female feedback as well, uh, as that's um, obviously not an area that I am as strong and experienced in. And so as my goal, though, and as I've written Beyond the Battle, I do know uh, several women have read it. They've gotten a lot out of it. I know the identity in Christ piece is for everybody. It's for it's for men, women, and it, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then obviously there's some different ways that it contextualizes into each of our uh, specific settings and, and things that we deal with. So for now, we'll jump to Guy's question. Uh, his question is this. What does female against male domestic violence look like? I'm finding that few, if any men, have not experienced female aggression, whether physically or emotionally. How many guys are using porn as an inappropriate escape hatch? without dealing with relational abuse? So, good question and a deep question. Obviously, the dominating conversation around domestic violence is male against female. Um, What does female against male domestic violence look like? I have not experienced that. So, I I can't speak from experience, but I think it looks like what it sounds like it looks like. I certainly know it can happen where a female would come against a male in a violent way, whether that's with a weapon or otherwise. Uh, He says, I'm finding that few, if any men, have not experienced female aggression, whether physically or emotionally. I would disagree there. I think not to discount, Guy, your your own experience. I think I want to validate that, and whatever has happened to you is true and valid. I do think it's very easy Uh, Maybe easy is the wrong word, but it's natural for us to assume that our experience or the experience of a few other people that we've talked to is the same experience as everyone else. And that's true across the board. When we're talking about relationships, we're talking about different types of uh, sexual sin or sexual dysfunction. Um, For example, it's it's anything dealing with gender. It's bad to generalize because, sure, in, in this case, we can generalize that women are always the victim of domestic violence and men are always uh, the perpetrators. That's not always the case. Same with sexual abuse. Uh, Even if there's a trend that there's more women that have been abused than men, uh, there's lots and lots of stories, even on the tales of the Me Too movement, of men saying, I was abused as a boy. In fact, in the last couple months, I've heard several testimonies. I went to a men's event in uh, Grand Rapids and the speaker, the last two speakers I've heard at men's events were men that had been sexually abused when they were boys. And they talked about how they held that in for decades and how it affected them with pornography and in their marriages and, and all kinds of things. So my point there is we shouldn't generalize that even if there's a trend for a gender uh, to act a certain way or to have certain things happen to them, it can. It's, there's so many people in the world that we need to be careful not to just generalize and do a blanket statement because then we're going to alienate people who, uh, you know, who are struggling. And uh, a good example of that would be even in Beyond the Battle. I think often the way I, I talk about sex within Beyond the Battle is that it's the guy in the marriage who like wants sex more than the wife does. And I've had a couple of women, you know, that I trust, women from my church and, and whatnot that have 
read that or read something I've written about online or just heard me kind of give counsel and have just said, you know, that's probably mostly your experience with the guys who come to you to receive counseling because a woman probably isn't going to feel comfortable coming to me as a male uh, to receive counsel on that. But we're just saying that it can be the other way around as well. And where the, the woman desires sex more than the guy. And that's just important to keep, in, to keep in mind as we talk about these things. That's why this is a podcast for men and for women. And, I mean, it's scary or dangerous to even write a book for men or write a book for women. I know especially a lot of the books for women, they, and I've just heard this from a few different women, where the book seems so fluffy and... Like, this is what a woman wants in a relationship. And these women are like, that's not what I want in a relationship. So anyway, there's there's no perfect way to do it. And that's a little bit of a tangent, but hopefully helpful as we kind of talk about all of these issues, especially in a podcast that is for men and women. And so uh, back to the guy's question, I'm finding that few, if any, men have not experienced female aggression, whether physically or emotionally. Um, so there are some men who have for sure. Um, I'm not sure about a majority or anything like that. I have not. Uh, but his question is how many guys are using porn as an inappropriate escape hatch without dealing with relationship abuse? I think that the first half of that question really hits on something that many guys are using porn as an inappropriate escape hatch period and they're not dealing with whatever the underlying issues are. So in the case of Guy or the people that he knows, it could be relational abuse. Now, it could be any number of things. There could be other problems going on in a marriage. There could just be a desire for something we talk quite a bit about in the Beyond the Battle book is a man's desire for validation, approval, acceptance, comfort. He's looking for these things from his wife if he's married. If he's single, he's just looking for these things. When he doesn't get them, he looks to pornography as the inappropriate escape hatch. It could a Pornography could be an inappropriate escape hatch for stress at work or stress in life. And it's like, I just need this relief. I need this release, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so I would say whatever the issue is, yeah, you have to get to the root of the issue. If you're in a marriage where your wife is repeatedly... Uh, rejecting you sexually. Now, that wouldn't be considered relational abuse, but that certainly is not a healthy thing going forward in a relationship. And so there certainly are plenty of guys who are looking to pornography because their wife is rejecting them or not showing them, you know, acceptance, affection. And a lot of what Beyond the Battle does is it helps a guy deal with that and find his wholeness in Christ so he doesn't have to go looking for it elsewhere in a sinful sort of way. But certainly, while the book's not a book about, it's not a marriage counseling book, I would encourage any marital couple to go to counseling. I think we need to get rid of the stigma around counseling. And if there's an absence of sex or an absence of affection, or in this case, if there's relationship abuse, certainly uh, to go to counseling. If your partner, your spouse is uh, unwilling to go, then, uh, or, or even, shoot, if you were in a uh, dating relationship and there was actual abuse going on, for one, it's physical abuse, uh, particularly a man towards a woman. And the reason, I, the reason I, I do distinguish between the two, and that's why he says, what does female against male domestic violence look like? I think it looks different. I mean, men physically more often than not, are going to be able to overpower a woman in a way that a woman is not physically going to be able to overpower the man. There's certainly exceptions uh, to that, but that's why domestic violence is such an issue uh, where, and we have to talk about it, and where um, I have three daughters, right? And so certainly I fear for them. I fear that they'll end up with the wrong guy. If you're dating a guy and he's abusing you, I think you should leave him right away. If if you're if you're married to a husband who's physically abusing you, there can be arguments about if that's an excuse for divorce or or whatever it might be, but I'm I certainly would never tell someone to stay in that house, to stay in that relationship, and certainly there's going to be circumstances where divorce is the right option, but going to counseling first, uh 
depending on the situation, these are such touchy situations. It could be a situation where you need to just go to the police and skip counseling, right? Uh, but my point is that the root issue should be dealt with because usually pornography is a symptom. And most pornography, because at the end of the day, you're, you're asking a question about porn. And uh, that is a, a topic I'm more comfortable talking about and I, uh, than, than I am as far as being an expert on something than domestic violence. But pornography is a symptom. It's uh, in, in most sexual purity books, Christian sexual purity books, they just deal with the symptom. It's like, don't do it, stop doing it, stop doing it, don't do it, behave, uh, do this, not that, do this, not that. But they don't deal with the root issue, the source of where, of why we're looking at pornography in the first place. And going to a counselor might even help you figure out why I'm looking at pornography in the first place and then can help you bury underneath the surface of that. But that's really what Beyond the Battle sets out to do is to say whatever's missing at the core, it could have been something from your childhood, could be abuse, it could have just been neglect, it could have been the way your parents raised you, it could have been trying to fit in with the popular crowd, but there's these vacancies inside of us and we look to porn to comfort us, to give us that validation. We look to women or women look to men to comfort them to find that validation, acceptance, approval, and sex, uh, dressing in a certain way, getting sorts of attention from men or from women. Those are all these ways that we try to fill that hole for acceptance, approval, but the cup inside of us has no bottom to it. So no matter what we put in it, it falls right out. Uh, We can put porn in it, relationships in it, popularity in it, and there's no bottom to it. And so that's why our identity in Christ is such a key thing. So I hope that I gave some help to that question. And uh, if anyone has been through any kind of uh, experiences that could help give further uh, help to that question for people dealing with it, please feel free to let me know. I'll wrap up the mailbag here. And remind you, you can email the podcast at Beyond the Battle Podcast at gmail.com or on Twitter at Battle underscore podcast. So let's jump into our video. This is again video number five in the series, chapters 10 and 11. And the topic is Embracing Reality. Fantasy can feel like an invincible foe, right? It just seems perfect. It doesn't matter how much bad stuff's going on in your life. You just close your eyes and picture somewhere amazing or some incredible experience. And in fantasy, you're there with zero effort of your own, right? Well, fantasy actually has a glass chin to it. A glass chin meaning you hit that one weakness and the whole thing falls apart. Think about it this way. You ever watch television and you are super hungry and all of a sudden a commercial comes on for food, much like the one on my TV here. And you see that food and it looks so good, your mouth starts to water and it looks exquisite. And you haven't eaten, by the way, in days. So what do you do? You do what anyone would do when you're hungry. You just take a big bite into the screen. And... um, What happens? Well, pretty much besides looking silly, nothing happens, right? The the food on the screen, it doesn't leave the screen and enter into your body. I get no nourishment. I could take as many bites out of this screen as I would like, and nothing is going to change except I'm going to get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. This food will not nourish, nor will it satisfy. Why? Because this food isn't real. It's not reality, and reality is where we live. Not only will this food not nourish me, this food will eventually kill me. Because the more I'm addicted to the fantasy food on my TV screen, the less I'm actually eating real food that's going to bring nourishment to my body. And the truth is, like we learned in chapter 2, we as men are so hungry, aren't we? We're so hungry for, for validation. We're so hungry for acceptance. We're so hungry for approval. And here comes fantasy to fill all of those needs for us. If I asked you what the opposite of life is, you probably would say death. And that's true. 
But another opposite of life is fantasy, because fantasy takes us away from life to the point that we dry up entirely. You've probably heard the phrase before, the grass is greener on the other side. Well, how about the phrase, the grass is greenest where you water it? See, the only reason the grass is greener on the other side is because you're spending all of your time and energy there, and you're neglecting the lawn that God has given you to stand on. Jesus hits on this in John 10.10. He says, The thief has come to steal and to kill and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Biting into a TV screen is not going to bring you life. Living in reality will. Embracing reality will. That's the thing about reality. Jesus isn't saying, oh, this is what I've given you, just put up with it. Oh, this is what I've given you, just tolerate it. No, he's saying invest in it, embrace it, and you will have abundant life if you do so. Check out Proverbs 5 in your small group. Read through it. And what it is, it's an old man giving advice to a young man about sex. And through it, in your group, list out all of the fantasies that the old man talks about when it comes to sex. And within that fantasy, divide it up then between reality that's positive and reality that's negative. If all you've eaten is this food, you're going to be very sick as a result. If you're comfortable in your group, share with one another the way you've been burned by fantasy. And also share the way you've invested in reality and the way you've seen fruit in your life. Embrace reality. Don't try to live off of fantasy. And don't just tolerate reality. Be grateful for the lawn God has given you. Whether that's your marriage, whether that's your singleness, invest in it and watch the fruit that the Lord will bring out of it. So as I was watching that just this time around and thinking about Guy's question again, I think this same thing happened last episode where the question does tie into the video. That was not planned. But the embracing reality concept, first of all, I think it applies to the vast majority of marriages where you, you I'll, I'll, I'll say the, the, the negative side of it first, I guess. Sometimes especially, um, well, I guess especially at all times, but because of the Me Too movement, which we all should be thankful for, that it brought out domestic violence and abuse and rape and all these sorts of things and, and brought them to light, and there's accountability, where to be told to embrace reality, if you're in an abusive relationship, what I'm not saying is to just embrace that and to be thankful for it, okay? And so I, I, in the book, it's, it's nuanced a little more than it is here in the, in the video. And honestly, again, this video and this book is for men. And I have found that as I've, as I've written blogs and women have commented on them, and as some women have read my book and given me some feedback, that the main... Uh, difference or the main thing that I will change when so the plan is to do a book for women that's uh, working title is called more than a princess it'll be co-authored with a woman author but it will follow essentially the same the same themes of beyond the battle so churches can kind of go through the the two books together and have men's groups and women's groups and and whatnot but I think the main difference really is the this difference of abuse so I was even talking to a woman from my church about this, and she said, you know, it's hard to tell the difference, or hard to define the difference between, like, as a woman, a crappy marriage and actual abuse. So, you know, those were her words. So basically, there's actual physical abuse is black and white, right? Um, Sexual abuse is, for the most part, black and white. Though I think there's women in marriages that are sexually abused by their husband and it's never it's never called that but uh, that's possible but talking about emotional abuse is a real thing uh, having a crappy marriage is a real thing that might not be abuse right it just depends every situation is going to be different so the point of this embracing reality is if you're in a marriage where there's not abuse and i think 
even if if the female is abusing the male, and this would be back to Guy's question, what's the difference? I think for it to be like serious domestic violence, maybe a weapon has to be involved. I mean, there has to be a serious ability to physically harm. And that is going to be... Uh, now, sure, if a woman is in the habit of slapping her husband and, you know, things like that, I am not the judge and arbiter, I guess, of these specific things. Uh, but and, and so my hope is what I say in the book and in this video, it's it's not to give green lights or red lights on what to do in a specific situation when there's abuse involved or if it's close to abuse or a gray area of abuse. What I'm talking about is more like your average marriage that when you talk to people that are going to marriage counseling, it's if it's not for abuse, it's for something else, right? There's a general sense of discontent in a whole bunch of marriages from, from the man and from the woman. Oh, I wish my husband would do this. I wish my wife would do this. It could be sexual things. It could be just taking responsibility for things. It could just be things that annoy you. Some of these things are really significant things, and I'm not trying to say to just ignore them. What, what I want us to understand and what the video lays out is you've been given one reality, and many times all it takes for that reality to be better is a different perspective on that reality. So not all the time, many times, right? But not all the time, uh, but many times... Uh, we spend a lot of our time with the feeling of entitlement, which I write quite a bit about, but also just the discontent of saying, I need my spouse to change. My spouse needs to stop doing this and stop doing this. And we end up living our whole lives without one, without any gratitude. And that's just a very miserable place to be. But we end up then living our lives in a fantasy world. And so the gratitude piece I talked about in chapter two, I believe it was, the thousands of mercies idea. But this chapters 10 and 11 are really about comparing fantasy to reality. See, whether it's pornography or mental fantasy or if you're reading romance novels or there's someone in your life that you're attracted to that's not your spouse if you're married, these are fantasies that we live in. And often the fantasy can just be what's going on in our head. You may not have looked at porn in years, but you'll go to this fantasy world, whether you're single or married. And the truth about your fantasy world, no matter what you're going through in reality and how bad it is, your fantasy isn't real. So the more time you spend in your, re in your fantasy, that's what I talked about watering the grass. Uh, the grass looks greener on the other side because that's where you're spending time. You've been watering that grass. So your present reality, whether that's your married reality or single reality, it's getting drier and drier and drier. Now, here's another important nuance to this. I'm, I'm not saying that the gratitude has to come from, oh, I'm so grateful for my spouse that I have in reality. But it can come from the gratitude for simply who Jesus is, the gratitude for the mercy that he's given you. I often think that a helpful example in this is Jesus himself. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's the night before he dies. He's pleading to the Father. He's saying, take this cup from me. And, you know, if you're a Christian and you know the Bible, you know the rest of the story where he says, not my will, but yours be done, Father. And, and he ends up, you know, dying on the cross. But in, in, I think, starting in the Garden of Gethsemane through when he dies on the cross, you just see Jesus in utter anguish. But at the same time, there's a level of peace that he has. Sure, it's different than gratitude. Maybe that's the wrong word to use. But there's a level of peace Jesus has about his circumstance that doesn't change his circumstance. His, he's still dying on the cross. But there's a connection with God where he has a different perspective about what's going on, where he's still living in reality. When, when he was on the cross, he was thinking about the Father and the Father's love for him. When he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, he's thinking about the Father and their relationship. He wasn't fantasizing. He wasn't thinking about, oh, man, I remember when Satan was tempting me in the wilderness and I could have turned those rocks into bread. And man, or I, I remember when I 
turned, uh, I, did, I did that miracle and I fed 20,000 people with the loaves of bread and the fish and man, that was great. I, I wish I could go back there and do that. I mean, that's what we do. We, we ruminate on these fantasies and sure, that example of Jesus on the cross, it's a little bit extreme, uh, but I, I, I say that to say that in our marriages or in our singleness, we end up living in, whether it could be something that happened in the past, a relationship we were in in the past, we don't know that person anymore, we're not in a relationship with them anymore, the relationship is broken, and we, we go there for comfort. And then when we come back to reality, what happens? It's just even more of a letdown. And so severe depression ensues, or... Uh, pornography itself, it's like the perfect cycle of the depressive, addictive cycle. So if you're in pornography, oh, this is so great. I have this great life with this woman on the screen or this man on the screen or in your romance novel. And ladies, romance novels, whether it's Fifty Shades of Grey or your standard you know, romance novel on the shelf, these do the same thing to your mind as pornography does to the mind of a man you know, or of a woman. But your mind is fantasizing about a relationship that is not true. I mean, picture a romance novel. You have a man or a woman, they're sitting at their keyboard in their office, and this story doesn't exist. They create it out of nothing. And then you read the story, and you long for your spouse. Typically, in this case, I mean, sure, men do read romance novels as well. But just talking to the women listening for a second who might read them, and I'm shocked. Honestly, I am shocked at the Christian women who read Fifty Shades of Grey and go to see the movie. I'm just utterly shocked. Mature, like leaders in their church, women. Uh, but for to understand that when you read that book or any romance novel and you say, I, I think the guy's name is Christian Gray. I've, I've read a few blogs. Uh, I've written a few blogs, I should say, about those movies when they were coming out to say, oh, I wish my, my husband was like Christian Gray in this way or that way, realizing how there is no Christian Gray, like he doesn't exist or whoever it is. You could be watching a Brad Pitt movie and he's playing a certain character and you can say, I wish my spouse was like this character. That character does not exist. It was it was written down by a screenwriter at some point. And so my point is fantasy doesn't discriminate between men and women. Uh, we can fantasize about someone we see in a movie realizing that that person does not exist in real life. It's, it's like wishing we could be with Santa Claus. It's not wise to wish you could be with Santa Claus because there is no Santa Claus. So what you missed in the video, if you haven't actually watched it, you can watch all these videos, by the way. They're at addedcrossroads.net slash beyond videos. But I have a TV monitor, and it's it's goofy the way we set it up. We, there's like a toy plastic piece of corn that we tape to the screen, and I try eating it in, in the video. But it's showing that if you watch a TV commercial with food, you can bite into the screen all you want. That's the porn. That's the fantasy but in the end, you will die from that because it's not real food. Now, in uh, the book, Beyond the Battle, I talk about the solution isn't to bite into the TV screen. It's to learn how to cook, right? It's to learn how to get your appetite met in Christ first and foremost. And if you're married, how to invest in your marriage to have a better marriage if that's possible. It may not be possible. So the point of all this, and I'll close with this, I've kind of said it, but just to really summarize it is to say, I don't know the percentage, but maybe let's say 80% of marriages, maybe throwing out a percentage is stupid, but I think 80% of marriages, you need to embrace reality to say, God has given me this reality. My husband or wife who's overweight or who doesn't clean up after themselves or who they just have, the, maybe they have a, now even with like an anger problem, right? There's differences between explosive anger and someone who's just, you know, they just sometimes are a little irritable or whatever it might be, right? And so what I'm not saying is, how oh, it's so hard to talk about this because with guys, honestly, I say to guys, like, guys, deal with it. Get your fulfillment in Christ and embrace the reality he's given you. The wife he's given you is a gift. She's a gift. And even if 
there's these things that she's doing. Again, I, I, this is 80, 90% of marriages. Um, you don't, she's not God. She's not going to be perfect. You can't expect perfection out of her. The things you are looking for from her, you can only find in God. So what I'm telling you is every time you go somewhere else in your mind, whether it's to porn or to thinking about another woman, or if you're married, thinking about being single, if you're single, thinking about being married, every second you spend in that fantasy world is a second where you could have been making your your actual world better. Now, your spouse may not get any better. Your marriage may not be able to get any better. You can still make your life better. Being single is a great example of that. So you can find fulfillment in other things in Christ, just hobbies, things he's given, given you passions about, to produce fruit in those areas. And if you're married, there may not be much fruit in your marriage, but there can be fruit in your life still, if that makes sense, where you can still invest in your reality to say, you know what, while my reality is not good, going to fantasy is even worse. So hopefully this helps. I know depending on your situation, if you're in an abusive relationship, if you're in a very oppressive relationship, I'm not I'm not giving rules here. I guess that's what I want to say. I'm not giving out dogma or rules. For example, the guy, I don't remember his name, the Southern Baptist um, guy that was in the news recently, tons of flack. Um, people are asking him to step down because he told a woman in an abusive relationship to stay in her marriage. She came to church with two black eyes, and the guy, and he was happy because it was the first time the husband had ever been to church, right? That's wrong. Like, we need to just call that out. That is foolish of the pastor to say that. That is wrong of the pastor to say that. Uh, that woman needs to get out of that relationship. Um, there needs to be extreme intervention there. She does not need to, um, you don't need to go through that type of abuse. So it's important to caveat that. But most relationships aren't like that. Most relationships is my spouse is annoying to me. And I'm going to go think about fantasy instead, right? I'm going to go look at porn. I'm going to think about the guy that I dated in college or the girl I dated in high school, or I'm going to go read this romance novel because my spouse is annoying. So, and those are the situations where we can say, no, embrace reality. Don't waste your life in fantasy. That's what Satan wants. That's death. There's no life there. Jesus wants you to take the life he's given you and to make the most of it. So, We'd love to hear from you. Hopefully that helps. Uh, if it doesn't make a lot of sense and you haven't read the book yet, again, these videos go along with the book. So I think reading chapters 10 and 11 will help quite a bit. But I am doing an updated edition of the book. And in that updated edition, there are some of these nuances I'm trying to explain here that I put into the book to help them make a little bit more sense. So with that, I will wrap up episode five. I really do appreciate you listening. I've heard back from several listeners who tell me they listen to the podcast while they're at work. Uh, they just kind of listen to it over and over again. They listen to the audio book while they're working and it just helps keep their mind on these truths. I don't think this podcast is magical. I don't think the book that I wrote is magical. Uh, magic is the wrong word, but I do believe the Bible is supernatural. I think God is real and amazing and works miracles in people's hearts and lives, and I'm witness to it. So my hope is that this podcast and the Beyond the Battle book, they just keep your mind and your heart rooted in God who is amazing and supernatural. And the way I was using the word before, magical, but God, very real, very uh, much the source of love, very much what each of us are really looking for in men or women or in sex or in relationships, whether we are married or single. So I hope that it brings you back to that. I don't remember what my end tagline was last time. I do remember it was good. I remember it was long. But I do just want to say we're in this together. This is the conclusion of the podcast episode. But as you go, remember you're not alone. Remember that we're in this together, that this does not have to be a subject that we never talk about or we need to be ashamed to talk about. I think it's the subject that people deal with the most 
in the world and in the church. And so I hope this can be a safe place for you uh, to hear about these issues, to read about, to uh, and please show me grace, especially on the podcast, as most of this is just off the cuff. Uh, if there's if there's areas that I, I attempted to help with but missed on, but know that I'm in this with you. Uh, we're in this together. Don't walk this path alone. Do not walk this path alone. So reach out to me if that is helpful for you. Reach out to people in your life that are around you. You can do so directly at battle underscore podcast on Twitter and beyond the battle podcast at gmail.com. I hope that I will talk to you in two weeks. I will, in fact, in a week and a half. That is what would be so great. But I can't promise. Uh, but do know that I'm not going anywhere. I'll be back. Uh, hopefully, it won't take as long as it did this last time. So I will talk to you soon. Hopefully, in a month and a half, we'll finish up this little mini series. Next week will be video six of six. And I will talk to you. That they hear it. If there's some confusion, then I hope you see him clearly. Raise them, raise them, raise them. They've been sleeping for some ages. Now, all God's babies so confused by this hatred. Poor pit preachers shouldn't aim to be A list. Money probably long, but sure is what your days is.